Hello all YouTubers, I'm the Weather Dude. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for tuning back into the 17th Hurricane Season Discussion for August 6th, 2020. Before we get on with today's video, however, it would be really awesome if you guys did hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much, by the way, for 900 subscribers. We are almost there. We're less than 100 away from the big ultimate goal of 1,000 subscribers. So please don't forget to hit that subscribe button, as well as ring the bell notification so you don't miss my next upload. Also, watch the whole video because getting to the goal of 1,000 subscribers in monetization, we're getting very close. And you guys watching the whole video will help the weather dude channel out a lot so please consider watching the whole video as well please do and also like and share this video with your friends thank you now let's go on with today's video so today is our 17th hurricane season discussion so signs of a hyperactive 2020 atlantic hurricane season as you guys may or may not know, we've already had nine named storms this season. And I believe at least two hurricanes, but not a major hurricane yet. So we're going to be taking a look at the latest hurricane season updated maps. And I hope you guys enjoy. So again, we have a La Nina watch that is still in effect, okay? This was activated for a little while now. All right, that means our chances for La Nina have increased. Um, and obviously, La Nina does contribute to a more active hurricane season. All right, so the ENSO outlook has been raised to a watch again. Um... Again, a La Nina watch doesn't guarantee La Nina, and a La Nina will occur, but it's an indication that, you know, the, based on the factors that we have, that we could be in a La Nina maybe the next month. All right, so looking at the latest model updates here, as you can see for August on the top, you have your Birdo Meteorology model. Obviously, Birdo Meteorology is where I get uh, some of the maps that I'll be showing you in the first part of this video. Um, then you have other models like the Euro model you might recognize. You got NASA, you got NOAA on there. Um, and a lot of the models are, you know, more shifting around um, negative neutral, which is to the left of the black line in the middle. But it's also to the right of the blue line because you got your La Nina, you got your El Nino. To those, you, to those of you guys that do not know, then you got your neutral in the middle. But more specifically, over here, positive and then negative. All right. So we're, we're trending more towards the negative side. That's definitely been happening. But like I said, we don't need to have a La Nina to have an active hurricane season neutral can contribute to an active hurricane season as well. 2005, rec the record number of or named storms in a season, that was a neutral year. That was not a La Nina. I hope a lot of you know that. But if you don't, now you do. So for September, um, a lot more models shift into La Nina now. We got NASA, NOAA, UKMO, and CANSIPS all in La Nina now. So that's when I think we'll have our best chance to see La Nina, September and maybe October. Um, and as you know, October is when we start to see a lot more tropical activity on the East Coast. But the East Coast has had plenty of activity already this season. They've already had two named storms impact them directly. All right. We had Tropical Storm Faye and Hurricane Isaias impact the East Coast directly. All right. So October 2020, all right, we have the BOM, the Borough Meteorology Models, now in on La Nina. So it's CANSIPS, NASA, and NOAA, and UKMO. Now keep in mind that, again, as I keep explaining, negative 0.8 is your, more, your La Nina conditions for the Australian standards, for American standards, it's um, a half a degree, which is like right about here. So a lot of models by American standards, like the Euro and the JMA and the Medio, are already in La Nina as well, but not by Australian standards. To be honest, I don't know which one I like better. I do actually more so like um, Australia standards better. Um, but as we head towards November, the end of hurricane season, you see how the models are. And at the bottom is your mean. So we, that's our, you know, the sum of all, you know, three, four, five, six, all seven of these models. Or excuse me, all eight of these models. That is the sum up of all those. They combine together, average amount, and we got a bad degree. So maybe a week to moderate La Nina is certainly possible by November, according to these select eight models. Now, looking at an updated borough meteorology map, this is some more like spaghetti models and what do they predict will happen. Um, the green line, again, is the sum of all those models. And, and the green line does go into La Nina, I say the end of October, maybe in towards November, December. But December, hurricane season's already done. So now they're predicting maybe September we might still be in a neutral phase. But like I said, a, sh a negative neutral and a weak line in is really not much of a difference. Um, that really does matter for winter season, though, however. Hopefully, I'll be able to do another winter forecast update soon. Um, but you see, October through December, we're in La Nina and then back to neutral by January. But that's not hurricane. Hurricane season's focused here. Um, but still, a decent amount of models, more, more of them are trending more towards a very, very close... 
um, border between negative and neutral and La Nina. It's a very close, very close here. And looking at June into July, we actually did go up a little bit. We're still, still around the zero line. We're waiting for that huge drop. All right, but the drop did happen in, in May, actually, as you, as you saw. Um, I All the other hurricane discussions, I talked about that as well. So looking at the probabilities, um, they have shifted around a little bit. So our chances for La Nina are still, we have a better chance for La Nina than we do for a neutral by October. So 51.5% chance, it does drop to 44% chance by November, and in December, it's down to 35. But as of right now, I think as of August, we're definitely holding neutral, but we're still waiting. Maybe September, October, we still have a chance. But like I said, even if it's not La Nina, we can still see a very active hurricane season, which that's what we're starting to see already. And I do have an updated forecast for the rest of the season too. So consider sticking around to the end of the video, please. So looking at the Nino 3-4 SST anomalies, for August, all right, nothing has to change too much in this department. Um, August, negative 0.6. All right, October is negative 0.9. And then we, by December, we dropped to, to about one degree below average, which is definitely La Nina. But October, we'll see if we can get there. That means, uh, that obviously does mean definitely a La Nina pattern, of course, by both Australia and American standards. So the ocean temperature anomalies have been improving a lot, a lot lately. And you can look... With the exception of the East Coast, it's a little, you know, a few, I mean, we're kind of few and far between here, but the East Coast is sort of a little shifty, um, probably because of Isaias. This is pretty much the exact track it made. So behind Isaias, obviously, we're going to have some cooler waters. Also, we have some cooler waters off the Del Marva coastline. But other than that, all right, the Gulf of Mexico has been improving a lot. The Caribbean is still very warm. Much of the Western Atlantic surrounding Bermuda is very warm, as well as the Eastern Caribbean out towards the Tropical Atlantic, which I will be showing you as well. So look at the southwestern gulf now. Bay of Campeche, oops, sorry about that. Um, southwestern gulf here, 31 degrees Celsius. That's like some of our, war that became our warmest spot now. Also, that northern little tip in South America there, which is always pretty warm. But much of the gulf now, actually all of it, is pretty much 30 degrees Celsius and above. Uh, Caribbean, very warm as well. Surrounding Bermuda, we got 29, 30 degrees Celsius, which is definitely hovering near the upper, upper 80s here. Um, and as you can see, uh, towards the Eastern Caribbean by the Windward Islands as well, where East Aegis also did track, all right, we've got some warm waters there as well. So looking out to the tropical Atlantic now, this is the way it's been uh, over the past few weeks. We've kind of been bouncing back and forth between, we've got a couple of warmer spots here, got some cooler spots here, another warm spot there. All right, so it's bouncing back and forth, but once it gets out towards the islands and maybe even towards Bermuda, uh, we still got some warmer water in effect. Um, and that obviously will, that's like a pro for development. And now pretty much, because you remember, uh, the tropical waves usually come off in a, in a motion like this off of Africa. And we're watching some African developments here that could be heading into the Caribbean. All right. But we're a little bit far off for that. But other than 94L, which now has a 0% chance of development, there is nothing else to talk about in the tropics right now in terms of individual storms. But you can see we're starting to warm up into the 80s now. Uh, and this is the location near the eastern part of the MDR where the uh, tropical waves will come off of Africa. Uh, and they, they have been already, actually. Um, it did start in late July. So looking at the Caribbean, look at the Caribbean lately. They have been, we were there at one point, now we're back. We're about 0.8 degrees. The whole Caribbean as a whole, at, on average, 0.8 degrees Celsius above average. Look at the MDR as well. It's gone up recently. So we're starting to see everything trend up, and that's not necessarily good. I mean, it's good for developing tropical systems, but not good for the places that they impact. North Atlantic, again, I say this every time, this does, this does include the Arctic region, so... Keep that in mind, but we're even in the North Atlantic, we're still above average, which is definitely saying something. And the East Tropical Atlantic as a whole, like I said, um, there are some places that are more so back and forth, so that's why it's been going up and down a little bit lately, as it usually does. But as of right now, the East Tropical Atlantic is also above average. But look at the Nino 3 4 index. We have recently had a huge drop, maybe we're coming back up a little bit, but still neutral. I mean, it's not quite a La Nina like we almost had back in late May. But we are seeing some more drops now, which could be an indicator that we could be seeing more of these drops towards, you know, neutral even La Nina. So that's your Nino 3-4 index. Looking at the tropical intensity index here, as you can see, we have good development conditions for Gulf of Mexico, for the northern and western Caribbean, not necessarily the um, southern Caribbean. That could be due to some shear. Um, parts of the Bahamas and the western Atlantic, we also have some highly favorable conditions for development, as well as parts of the southeast coast. Now, here is, the, here is the Caribbean and kind of saying, well, we got our ocean water temperatures of 80 degrees plus. We know that. I mean, it's been there for a long time. This is saying how far underwater can we go and still find 80 degree waters. Now, the deeper the color, 
the better it is for tro developing tropical cyclones because when you get that sea surface temperature the, or the sea subsurface temperature to get higher and more energy at the subsurface, um, that, that helps hurricanes even more, okay? So when we take a look at this, looks like in the Northern Caribbean, just south of Cuba here, this is usually the spot where we see this develop. We got, we, we can maybe go nearly 500, 550 feet below the ocean surface and still find 80 degree waters, that is amazing. Even much of the Eastern Caribbean, we can still go 350 feet below the ocean surface and still find 80 degree waters. So when you plunge beneath that ocean surface, you're gonna find some 80 degree waters um, as you go a couple, even a few hundred feet under the ocean surface. And this map also does look familiar. This is the tropical cyclone heat potential map. And this one's a little bit more sim a little bit more simple to explain. Obviously, your deeper colors mean more heat energy for the tropical cyclone slash hurricane. As you can see, Northern Caribbean has been holding well at the top of the graph for a long time here. I think even the Eastern Caribbean, we're starting to get some more, you know, orange, maybe some reddish colors starting to get in there. So the Caribbean has been improving as well. Gulf of Mexico hasn't really changed much. Right? You don't see too much change in these. Um, in terms of the first map that I showed you before, the Gulf of Mexico, maybe 150, maybe about 200 feet below the ocean surface, you'll find some 80 degree waters. Beyond that, the waters may start cooling down. We do have one little spot in the Gulf, however, this could be where, near where the uh, Gulf Stream starts as well as right here, where we could maybe see 300 feet below the ocean surface. We could still find 80 degree waters, but then you get to this blue spot, uh, and that's where we could go about maybe 75, 100 feet below the ocean surface. And still find 80 degree waters, which is not as good for development. So Gulf of Mexico is kind of uh, definitely a little, little iffy here. But your tropical cyclonic heat here and here, all right, definitely some some areas of stronger heat. But you look in this region, the Central Gulf, it's really not that much tropical cyclonic heat, and it's been like that for a pretty long time. If you've been watching these hurricane season discussion videos, which I hope you have been for a while, um, you would know that that's been sitting like that for a long time. Now the good news is. Again, the, well, the Gulf of Mexico really has no dry air in it right now, as well as the East Coast, probably because of some very moist air for today. All right, it's, um, no dry air. It's pretty, pretty, have a pretty unstable atmosphere, which is good for developing tropical cyclones. Um, we have some shower activity, just very disorganized in the Western Caribbean. The Caribbean may not be too good for development because we do have some little bit of dry air sitting there right now, um, as well as off the coast of Africa. But we're starting to see some tropical waves. This could be our next wave to watch here down the line. All right. And there's actually some tropical waves that are sitting on, like inland Africa that could be coming out over the water that we'll have to watch over the next week or two. Right? But um, as far as Bermuda is concerned, we do have some dry air around there. Got some very disorganized convection board. Whatever's left of 94 hours in here somewhere. All right? So looking at the wind shear, again, why did it say the Caribbean was a little bit unfavorable? Because again, like I said, you do have some stronger shear in the Southern and the Eastern Caribbean. But as for the Gulf, we're doing pretty good there. Western Atlantic, check, all right, um, out by Africa, this is the Cape Verde Islands right there, right over there, um, not too much wind shear, some blues and greens, so only 10 to 20 knots of shear, which is not bad for development, um, it's been holding pretty steady over the last 24 hours, so wind shear, not too bad, all right, we're starting to see the wind shear go down, and as if, as if it would go down anymore, I mean, wind shear's been pretty low, um, another tropical cyclone heat potential map, you can see very, very high, tropical cyclonic heat values across the Caribbean. And some of that is starting to seep into the Gulf and maybe out over the Gulf Stream. We've been seeing that for a while. Also, the Western Gulf, we got some more moderate um, tropical cyclone heat potential values, which is okay for development. Now, taking a look at the shear. Looking at the Caribbean, we've been below average for wind shear for a while. All right, it's been going back up a little bit because of that one little spot in the Caribbean that has some wind shear right now. But here's your average line, and we've still been below average for a decent long time. So that could be a little trend here. Uh, tropical Atlantic, we've been hovering around average, and you can't go wrong when it's average, right? Um, right this time of year, we usually stay a little bit below average for shear. Also, in September, another spot where it peaks at its lowest. All right, so shear, in terms of the Caribbean and the Tropical Atlantic, we're not doing too, too bad. Um, looking at the shear anomalies over the next week and a couple weeks, you'll be able to see that here with the GFS model. Um, they're predicting some more above average shear for the Gulf and the Caribbean. Maybe not so much shear though out in the tropics and not maybe not the subtropics either all right keep in mind wind shear is supposed to be low at this time of year so even when shear is a few knots above average it's not going to be too harmful for tropical development but then you start to see stuff like this now gfs could be a little bullish here all right but we got our 10-day forecast they're predicting some higher wind shear values for the caribbean which does actually protect you from the tropical cyclones but look what's starting to happen here below africa look at all this blue that's starting to emerge 
All right, maybe that, that could be a sign as well. But taking a look here at um, this is from the 14th to the 19th of August. Now, fast forwarding a little bit, they're still predicting 30 knots plus above average of shear, but out by Africa, uh, it's average to below average shear. So that could be a sign as well. Um, and then 17th to the 22nd, this could definitely change, but uh, the tropical Atlantic not, look, not looking like too much shear. So we'll see. And also, look at this. The East Coast, especially the Northeast Coast, not too much shear either. So maybe if somewhere to track up that way. And that's just five-day average. Maybe one day, like seven, this is 17th to the 22nd. Maybe the 19th is particularly, we have a particularly low amount of shear. But then on the 21st, we may have very high amounts of shear. Like I said, it's kind of, it, this is taking an average of it. Now, I did update this as well. Remember, this is additional name storms on top of what we already had. This is additional activity, all right? Now, we've had about nine storms this name season. Um, I said that backwards. We've had nine named storms this season. Um, so add on to this, and that's a total prediction of 20 to 23 named storms. I'm predicting, it, predicting an additional 11 to 14 named storms, which 11 to 14 is what you usually get in an entire season, and we could see that over the next couple months. Uh, an additional 6 to 10 hurricanes. Again, we've had two hurricanes already, I'm pretty sure. Hannah, as well as Isaias here, so that would make it 8 to 12 for the season. Um, major hurricanes, I did drop a little bit, even though we haven't had a major hurricane. Uh, didn't drop much, from 3 to 7 to 3 to 6, so not too much of a change there. Uh, we haven't had one major hurricane yet, but keep in mind, it could be coming soon. Seasonally, though, in an entire season, we usually see 12 main storms, 6 hurricanes, and 3 major hurricanes. And we could see just about that in the next couple months, maybe more than that, and just the next couple months, not the entire season. So... Again, keep in mind the steering flow. I do show you guys this map all the time. That's definitely been working here, especially for Isaiah. It's kind of took a similar check around the high like this. So um, this map is definitely very useful. Oh, and then maybe further on down the line, maybe some activity, more activity for the Gulf Coast, like Hannah. All right. Maybe another Hurricane Hannah could be coming to the Gulf Coast. All right. So something to watch. So thank you guys for watching today's video. Don't forget to check out my other upload today where I talk about the Mid-Atlantic. Could be experiencing some more flooding today even after Hurricane Isaias. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to check out my other upload for today. I am the Weather Dude, signing off. Till next time, catch you guys next video.